Good evening. My name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our evening services for Sunday, September the 1st. Per usual, we will sing several songs. We will observe the Lord's Supper. And I have a message for you that I hope will be helpful to all of us. Here at Northfield, we sing from the songbook, Songs of Faith and Praise. I know you may not have that book, but perhaps you can Google the song, or if you have your own songbook, I will give you the number, and I will give you the name of the song. So hopefully you will be able to sing along. The first song that we will sing in our book is number 202. It is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Music by Ludwig van Beethoven. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. <clears throat> joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of hearts. Hearts unfolding lights before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark and doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround me, earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around the center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain, column sun, rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depths of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ our Brother, all who live in love are Thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Mortals join the mighty chorus, which the morning stars began. Father, love is reigning o'er us, brother, love binds man to man. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us sunward in the triumph song of life. Number 477, There is a Place of Quiet Rest. 477, There is a Place of Quiet Rest. There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God, a place where sin cannot molest, near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, bless me. Redeemer, sent from the heart of God. Hold us who wait before thee, near to the heart of God. There is a 
place of comfort sweet, near to the heart of God, a place where we our Savior meet, near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God. Hold us who wait before Thee, near to the heart of God. There is a place of full release, near to the heart of God. A place where all is joy and peace, near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, bless me. Before we sing the Lord's Supper, we will sing number 315, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. 315, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Sing the first three verses. The first three verses. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Oh, 
we are instructed on the first day of the week in Acts chapter 20 and verse 7, when Paul was preaching at Troas, and they gathered together on the first day of the week to break bread. That signifies that on the first day of the week, it was part of uh, worship service to God to observe the Lord's Supper that Jesus instituted on the night in which he was betrayed. And so it came down from that through the first century church. And since it is in our Holy Spirit inspired New Testaments, it's part of what we were are to do every first day of the week. We're to gather around the Lord's table. Uh, as the song says, we survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died and understand the significance of the sacrifice that Jesus made for all of us, uh, that God sent him as we were yet sinners to come into a sinful world and redeem it and to sanctify us as we become his children. So as we gather about the table, let's remember Jesus on the cross and the sacrifice that he made for each one of us. Let's pray for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful in your divine wisdom that you did send Jesus to us. We're grateful that he made that wonderful sacrifice one time for all, that he gave himself up for each one of us. We can't imagine the pain that he suffered as he hung upon that cross, nails in his hands and his feet. As we partake of this bread, help us to remember his body. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. <clears throat> Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. We understand, dear Heavenly Father, that blood is that life-giving substance that flows through us. It, it sends nutrients to our whole body. And without it, uh, we just can't exist. We just thank you for the blood that flowed from Jesus. This blood was such special blood because it is the blood that forgives our sins. Help us as we partake to remember that blood that was shed and understand that it is the blood of our salvation. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. We also take time on the first day of the week to give back to the Lord. Even though it's not a part of the Lord's Supper, we can observe it any time during the service. We are told on the first day of the week that we are to lay by and store and give back to the Lord that which we have prospered. Giving back to the Lord is not reaching into your pocket for some loose change or just thinking, well, uh, you know, I paid all my bills. Whatever I have left over, I can give to the Lord is what we have purposed in our heart. It is how we have been blessed. And so as we give back, let's reflect that in our giving. And let's give with a cheerful heart because the scriptures tell us that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Let's pray. We thank you for this opportunity that we have to give. We know that we give you what is yours already because we understand that all blessings and all good things come from you. Bless us in our giving that we will be open-hearted, open-minded, and we will be open to the fact that we are to give as we have been prospered and that we should understand how much we indeed prosper. Help those that use these monies use it to further your work, to help the needy. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. The last song that we will sing before the lesson is number 479, Peace, Perfect Peace. Beautiful song. Peace, Perfect Peace. Peace, perfect peace, 
in this dark world of sin. The blood of Jesus whispers peace within. Peace, perfect peace, by thronging duty's breast to do the will of Jesus this is peace perfect peace with sorrow surging round on Jesus bosom God but come is found in is enough earth's struggles soon shall cease and Jesus call us to I know the Lord was praised in our song. I hope you got into it in praising the Lord. And we praise the Lord because he deserves our praise. And so I have a lesson for you this evening. If you were there this morning, and perhaps if you've remembered, I started a series entitled The Way of Christ. Uh, this evening, uh, uh, the subtitle of the way of Christ is the way of peace. Hence, uh, the songs that we sang reflected peace, the real peace that we ought to have in our life. The way of Christ is the way of peace. When Isaiah, the prophet, who understood messianically that there would be a Jesus, said that the Messiah would be the Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, 6 to 7. It is even claimed by Jesus in John 14, 27, that he himself offers a peace that no one else can possibly offer. And so the the word peace itself conveys some just some wondrous concepts. It's it's a state of harmony. It's a state of tranquility. It's the absence of hostility, the absence of mental stress, the absence of anxiety. And so uh, we have that Hebrew word shalom, which is completeness or soundness or welfare or peace. And so the inner tranquility and poise found in the way of Christ begins with, first, the peace of God. And I would maintain this evening that without God, one cannot experience true peace. Because in Romans chapter 15 and verse 33, Paul points out that God is a God of peace. And he offers this peace. We have a song that says, when peace like a river. This comes from Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. He offers peace like a river. When we think of a river, we think of flowing water. And that peace, the peace of God, should flow with us. Now, we get to that terrible aspect of sin in our life. Unforgiven sin makes peace with God impossible. Because as Isaiah 
says in Isaiah 59, verses 1 and 2, their iniquities separated them from God. And so instead of this peaceful river, we have a troubled sea. And that's what our life will be if we have unforgiven sins. But we observed the Lord's Supper just a few moments ago. And Jesus shed his blood that our sins might be washed away. And so we can be justified from our sins and be at peace with God, Paul tells us in Romans chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. With that in mind, God's peace, as we continue to read verses 5 and 6 of Romans chapter 5, makes this peace possible. Why is it? Because through this peace, we are able to be reconciled back to God. And that's so important for us in our lives, to be reconciled back to God. Now, once we have this peace with God, it is only then that other forms of peace are possible in our lives. The way of Christ provides peace with self. You know, we can't have peace with others. And the reality of this is, unless we are at peace with ourselves. And peace is a peace that the world cannot provide. Jesus said that in John chapter 14 and verse 17. I'm the one that brings you peace. Peace is unfazed by the world. We can have peace in our lives despite the fact that tribulations are going on around us. We can have this joyous peace that passes all understanding because we're at peace with ourselves. Jesus provides such peace through his teachings. We are to have this wondrous faith in our life. And because of that faith and life, uh, to make God and his kingdom is our priority. That's what Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 to 34 says. When we seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, this is the bedrock of our peace. It simplifies our lives. And we have this one other wonderful caveat, and it's not really a caveat. We have the gift of intercession. We get to pray to God, our Father. And we are to pray those prayers of supplication. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, Paul says, Be anxious in nothing, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let the peace of Christ dwell in you. It is the peace that passes understanding. May the peace guard your hearts through Christ. And so now we have peace with God and we have peace with self. How do we now have peace with others in our life, especially our brothers and sisters? Jesus breaks down the barriers between mankind. That is reflected in the third chapter of Ephesians, verses 13 to 17. He removes every barrier that there might be. He removes racial barriers. He redu uh, re uh, he uh, uh, removes social barriers. He removes national barriers. There's no barriers that Jesus and God can't make their way through. We can have peace within our families. And Jesus provides us with that stability and that 
love within our families that leads to peace. Following the doctrines of Jesus Christ leads to peace in our family. That's what the Apostle Paul wrote in Colossians chapter 3, verses 18 to 21. And then if we are at peace with the world, let's narrow it down. We're to have peace with our brethren. Jesus also provides that. Following his doctrine, according to First Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 12, this will lead to harmony and unity within brethren. And then take it a step further. Peace within our churches. Jesus offers us that peace. He offers it in such a way that when we heed through prayer, uh, Jesus, that is the cure for all disunity, that we can be one body, one church, as God calls us to be. And then maybe the toughest one. It is one of the hardest scriptures uh, that we have to deal with uh, that uh, comes from Jesus himself. Jesus even shows us that we are to have peace with our enemies. Through precept and through example, Jesus shows us how to make this peace. The reality of it is when there is enmity between someone in our lives, maybe it's our neighbor, the enmity only gets more powerful and stronger if, if there are shouting matches back and forth. We must choose the way of kindness. We must choose to kill them with kindness rather than this enmity. It's the only way to bring people that have issues with us back to us and back to the understanding that we're the ones that want to be peacemakers. And so we kill them with kindness so that we can have peace even with those that may be considered to be our enemies. So as we close this lesson this evening, let's review what we've talked about. When we talk about the way of Christ, the way of Christ is truly the way of peace. It's a peace that Jesus helps us to have. It is a peace that we can have with God the Father. It's the peace that we can have in our own lives, the peace with self. And then there is the peace with others. But it's important to do this in the right order. Order is so important sometimes. We can't have peace with self if we don't have peace with God. We can't have peace with others if we don't have peace with God. Peace with God must come first because there's no peace for the wicked. Isaiah brought that out in Isaiah chapter 48 verse 22. Peace with self comes next. Otherwise, if we don't have peace with self, peace with others gets very, very, very complicated. It becomes complicated by the turmoil in our own lives because we don't have peace within our own lives. And then the peace with others naturally comes last. Then we can be what Jesus called us to be in the Sermon on the Mount. He said, blessed are the peacemakers. And so with that, we need to come to understand that we must make peace with God. We, be, we become at peace with God by saying, I want to be one of your children. And as we become a child of God, 
we grow in the grace of Jesus Christ. The only way we can make peace with others is if we have the peace of God within us. And as the Apostle Paul so wonderfully put it, the peace that passes all understanding by growing in the knowledge of Christ. The way of Christ invites you. It invites you to follow the way of peace. Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse 16 says, now may the Lord of peace himself give you the peace always in every way. Do you have that peace in your life? If you don't, maybe it's because you haven't taken Jesus into your life and you haven't become one of God's children. The Bible is very clear at that, about that. It is that through the word of God, we find the instructions as to how to become his children. We hear and obey the word of God. We have faith in the word of God. And then finally, we say, God, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. God, I'm sorry for the way I live. I want to repent of the things that I've done. And I want to try to make a promise to you that I won't do these things again. And the final act is being baptized for the remission of your sins. And then you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you haven't come to Jesus, if you haven't come to God through Jesus Christ, the invitation is open to you. If you need to respond to that, if you get in touch with us, we will be there to help you in any way possible. Let's end our service with a prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful that you are our God and you are our Father. We're grateful that for the blessings that we have in our life that come only through you. Help us to realize the importance of these blessings and help us to understand the significance of what God should be in our lives. Help us to want to have the peace that does indeed pass all understanding in our lives. And for us to understand that it begins with having peace with God. Bless us this evening. Help us and comfort us. Continue to bless us in every way as you had, have. We just love you, dear God, and we love you with all of our hearts. Help us to reflect that in our lives. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all. Oh